Hello and welcome to this Tech Talk session that is all about SSL visibility and the ability to do intrusion prevention on HTTPS sessions. My name is Angelo Brancato and let's get started. The use of encryption via Secure Sockets layer, SSL, or its successor Transport Layer Security, TLS, is pervasive in the internet and IT industry and growing tremendously from day to day. So it is really safe to say that TLS is the de facto encryption standard for web, cloud and mobile communications. I will use SSL, TLS and HTTPS interchangeably in the following. Other factors are even accelerating the adoption of TLS. These factors are prominent support of TLS in the internet, the fact that it's becoming very cheap to implement TLS, and upcoming internet protocol standards that will have encryption as an integral part and most of the cases on by default. And all of that makes perfect sense because it is a proven and secure method to protect sensitive information that must travel through an untrusted network via encryption and authentication. When a web server incorporates an SSL certificate from a legitimate CA, users can be confident that their sensitive data will not fall into the wrong hands and, quite frankly, users gain trust and peace of mind from doing business over the internet. Think online banking, for example. So TLS can act as a business enabler. Now let's talk tech. TLS is a point-to-point -point encryption in between the client and the server. The whole information stream is strongly authenticated and encrypted and thus it is not feasible for a man in the middle to either read the clear text messages or to manipulate it. But where there is light, there is also shadow. Because TLS is a point-to-point -point encryption between the client and the server, security controls in between these two entities cannot inspect the traffic for malicious activity. To depict why that could be an issue, let's assume a very simple scenario, where the web server got compromised by an attacker and malicious code was placed on that web server. Every vulnerable client browsing to that web server's URL would get infected and a deep inspection engine would be completely blind to that because the application layer is point-to-point -point encrypted. So there are two options to eliminate the blind spot. Both options have to do with decrypting TLS for inspection and then encrypting it again, transparently for the client and the server. With option 1, we do that within the intrusion prevention system, on board, so to say. And with option 2, we use a dedicated external solution and do the decryption on a separate system. In this tech talk, we will focus on option 2, which we implement with our technology partner BlueCode and the BlueCode SSL Visibility Appliance. The BlueCode SSL Visibility Appliance is a purpose-built hardware appliance that can be implemented inline into the network wherever there is TLS to be decrypted in between a client and a server. Due to its TLS decryption hardware accelerator architecture, it can guarantee minimum latency, packet processing of up to 40 gigabits per second, and transparent TLS D and encryption up to 4 gigabit per second. The SSL Visibility Appliance can apply very granular policy that can control SSL traffic throughout the enterprise. For example, SSL policy enforcement enables security administrators to effectively balance data privacy and security by excluding the decryption and inspection of certain types of traffic, such as online banking and social networking. A very common deployment mode is to forward the decrypted traffic to the tipping point IPS where it gets inspected for malicious code, anomalies and attack vectors and then sent back to the visibility appliance to be encrypted again and forwarded to the destination transparently for the client and the server. With that, not only the malicious code of the compromised web server would be detected and blocked by the IPS, but also every other attempt of attackers to use SSL as a covert channel, for example, SSL links in spear phishing emails, trojans and backdoors communicating back to the command and control server via SSL, remote access trojans communicating via SSL, etc., etc. 
a so-called decrypt once feed many functionality within the blue code SSL visibility appliance allows to easily feed multiple network security tools simultaneously without any overhead. With that, you could also attach the HP Tipping Point Advanced Threat Appliance for malware analysis or any other security analytics tool and simultaneously process the decrypted SSL traffic. Alright, let's see how easy it is to implement the Blue Code SSL Visibility Appliance and how powerful its policies are to cover the SSL blind spots in a short live demonstration. In the first very simple use case, we will inspect TLS traffic coming in from the internet to an HTTPS web server within the DMZ of our organization. So, we will compromise a website in the lab and place malicious code on it and then browse to that website first without SSL visibility and then with SSL visibility in place. We will use the damn vulnerable website that is hosted in my DMZ on an HTTPS web server that, for the sake of simplicity for this demo, has a self-signed TLS certificate. By clicking on the security details of that website, you can see that the certificate box.local domain is verified by itself, box.local domain, because it's self-signed. The damn vulnerable web app lets you test all kinds of attacks against the website for self-training and demonstrations. In our case, we will do a cross-site scripting attack and post some JavaScript onto the website's forum so that every visitor of that website will automatically execute the JavaScript. By clicking on Sign Guestbook, the JavaScript gets placed onto the forum and immediately executed by every client browsing to that website. The IPS cannot detect that attack because it's not decrypting TLS and thus cannot detect the cross-site scripting attack within the application layer payload. So the IPS block log is empty right now. Now let's log on to the Blue Code SSL Visibility Appliance and set it up to decrypt that traffic from the client to my web server in the DMZ. First of all, we have to create a re-signing certificate authority because certificates needs to be re-signed by the visibility appliance. Let's give the internal CA a common name and the property parameters. For this demo, we will create a self-signed CA. For productive environments, we should select to generate a certificate signing request for an official CA like VeriSign, DigiCert or similar. Next, we have to import the certificate of our web server as a trusted certificate. For doing so, I will first get the Apache server certificate from the etc SSL certs directory and then upload it into the SSL visibility appliance. Now we can go ahead and create a rule set where we can define what TLS traffic we want to decrypt and send to the IPS for inspection. So we add a rule with the action decrypt resign certificate. We select the resigning CA that we just created and we select to only decrypt traffic where we have a trusted certificate. Then we click on OK and apply and this very simple rule set is in place. Lastly, we have to define on which ports of the visibility appliance the network traffic comes in, where the IPS is attached to and where the traffic should go out. To do so, we create a new segment and edit the mode of operation. We select active inline, fail to appliance. That means that if the IPS should be unavailable for any reason, the visibility appliance will fall back to forward the traffic without being inspected by the IPS to avoid any downtime. Then we attach the rule set that we created to it and click on OK.
To define the physical ports, we have to select the segment and select the corresponding network ports on the device shelf view. Okay, that's it. The Bluecode SSL visibility appliance should be able now to decrypt the HTTP traffic going to our damn vulnerable website and forward it to the tipping point IPS for inspection. So let's go back to that website and reload it. Looking at its TLS certificate, we still see the same certificate box.local domain, but now it is signed by the SSL visibility appliance. So we reset the website's database and go back to the cross-site scripting playground and do the exact same attack again. This time the HTTPS session will time out because the IPS blocked that network flow, having an attack in it. And by looking at the IPS logs again, sure enough, we now see the IPS filter that triggered because of the cross-site scripting attack. And we can also look at the Visibility Appliances SSL session log to check for the successful decryption event. Next up, we will configure the SSL Visibility Appliance to inspect TLS traffic going the other way around, from corporate clients browsing to the internet. First thing we have to do is to get the resigning CA's root certificate and distribute it to all corporate clients so that they will not get an error message saying that the CA is not trusted when browsing the internet to an HTTPS website. So we save it locally, make it an CRT suffix so that Windows can open it natively and import the SSL Visibility Appliance root certificate as a trusted CA. Let's double click it again to check if it is accepted now. Okay, now let's go back to our Visibility Appliance rule set. And the only thing we will change is that we not only allow trusted certificates, but any certificates to be re-signed. So let's go to a TLS enabled website. I will choose paypal.com and it will immediately redirect us to HTTPS. And if we take a look at the site certificate, we will see that it is re-signed by the visibility appliance and each and every packet is inspected by our IPS. But if you decrypt and inspect all SSL traffic flowing in and out of your perimeter, for example PayPal, you run into the risk of disgruntling your users, as well as potentially violating regulations, industry or other jurisdictional compliance mandates. For example, the policy could be to not decrypt traffic of the category banking, trading and social networking, but everything else. And that's where the SSL Visibility Appliance's powerful rule set comes in, which makes it very easy to control specific traffic and decide which traffic needs to be decrypted. So let's revisit the Visibility Appliance's rule sets. Before we do so, we create a host categorization list to trigger on banking and social networking websites. By clicking on Add, you can see the categories of websites linking to thousands of URLs, making it very easy to implement a whitelist or a blacklist based on the website categories. 
Okay, now let's go back to the rule sets and add a rule to cut through those websites, meaning not decrypting them. Let's make sure to place this rule at the very top of the rule set. To avoid users browsing to websites with invalid SSL certificates, we could choose the action Reject and trigger on any malformed certificate status. And with that we created a very simple, though very effective policy. To close the loop, let's look at the Visibility Appliances Inspect Once Feed Many feature by attaching the HP Tipping Point Advanced Threat Appliance on a copy port of the SSL Visibility Appliance to detect yet unknown malware within the HTTPS sessions. Once the ATA finds malware, it will synchronize that information automatically to the Tipping Point IPS to prevent that malware from communicating back to its command and control server and to stop its sprawl within the corporate network. First, we have to configure the copy port where the Tipping Point ATA will be attached to. To do so, we edit the segment and add the copy port to it. It's as simple as that. Ok, now I will click on a spear phishing email that has an HTTPS link in it pointing to a PDF with a new, yet unknown piece of malware in it. The malware will copy itself into the temp folder, install itself and delete itself after installation. Now let's switch to the HP Tipping Point ATA that got the unencrypted HTTP stream from the Blue Code SSL Visibility Appliance and sure enough the malware got executed in the sandbox and analyzed whereas all suspicious network or messaging activities got automatically synchronized with all HP Tipping Point IPS and next generation firewall systems. I hope you found this tech talk useful. Please don't forget to visit these Blue Code and HP sites to find out more about these solutions and get the latest data sheets and collaterals. Talk to you soon. Thank you and ciao.